Hello, Internet! So nice to see you. You guys know what is expert blindness? It's what happens when you learn something so well that it becomes natural to you and you forget how many little things you had to learn and you forget also all those little things because you internalize them and now you expect everybody to understand you at a high level because you expect everybody else to have internalized this thing too. I've noticed the other day that I was falling into this problem in a clamorous way, in a spectacular way, okay? I was explaining an idea to a student of mine, and then I said something that I say very often, which is, and then take it around the fretboard. Only this student is particularly bright. So the first thing is like immediately like I'm on the spot, like, what do you mean? take it around the fretboard. And like, yeah, take it around the fretboard. No, 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 no. What do you mean exactly We take it around the fretboard? And then, bam, it hit me. It hit me like a bullet in, straight in my forehead. Like, of course, I never explained him. What do I mean with taking it around the fretboard? And so, guilty as charged, okay? And it seems that a lot of people tell you that. You, you may have heard this. I mean, you may have heard it from me. I may have used this. I probably have used it several times in my past videos. Take these and take it around the fretboard. Time to explain what take it around the fretboard actually means. And uh, even if you think you know, maybe, maybe there's something new here that you haven't seen before, okay? But the idea is, I'm gonna explain these in two different situations, okay? I'm gonna explain these for a lick, and I'm gonna explain these for a chord, okay? So you have more than one idea on what it means to take something around the fretboard. And incidentally, if you do this, this thing of taking things around the fretboard regularly, you're gonna become way, way, way better as a guitar player. So, here it is. Let's say I have a lick, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay super simple as usual, okay? It's a super simple lick, it's three notes on a pentatonic scale, okay? I'm a A minor pentatonic scale, okay? And the lick is... It can't get simpler than that, okay? I am hitting an E note, third string, ninth fret, with my ring finger, sliding down to the D note at the seventh fret, and then pulling off to the C note at the fifth fret. Okay, you've heard this lick forever. It's part of countless other leaks and solos, etc. Et it's just a move, okay? And it's just three notes. Great. So if I tell you to take this around the fretboard, what do you do? Well, the first thing most people will do, not knowing the full depth of, of things, would be to just play those three notes, these exact three notes, somewhere else, which would be something already, okay? So E, D, C, good. And I would play, I don't know, E, D, C here, or I would play E, D, C here, or I would find. E, D, C here, okay, so, and that would be all good, E, D, C, E, D, C, great. This would be good already, at least you go around and move it a little bit, but the idea here is to go beyond just the notes, okay? Because what we're doing here is we are going down, descending three notes, we are playing, we are sliding between the first note and the second note, and then we are pulling off the third note. The notes are E, D, and C, but they could be other three notes, other three contiguous note in the pentatonic, okay? If we want to stay on the pentatonic. So I could do exactly the same, I don't know, between A, G, and E. The intervals are different, yes, but we are still in the same pentatonic scale and we are still doing the same thing, okay? We have five possible different starting points for this lick where we slide down a note and then pull off on the next note and the five starting points are the five notes of the pentatonic okay a c d e and g and e is the original but again i can start this on, a, on an a i can start this on a c i can start this on a d on an e on a g okay and of course i want to do this over all the strings of the guitar. So, for instance, I can do this on the fourth string, starting from the A at the seventh fret. I'm starting with my pinky to make the pull off later easier. Okay. Then I can start with the C note, or the D note, the E note, which is the original, or the G note. Okay. I can try to go even higher, okay, to see. 
just to see if I can do it that, that high, or I can try to go lower if I can, and all this kind of thing, okay? This is taking it around the fretboard. It's not just playing those three notes everywhere, it's playing the idea behind the lick. And then, of course, I can combine this thing over all the strings, okay, and maybe play something like this. I'm starting from this A, slide down to a G, pull off to E. Then I go on the next string, hit this D, down to the C, pull off to A, hit this G here, E and D, and then hit this C here. Basically, I'm, I'm doing the whole scale, only I'm playing three notes every string, and then sliding down and pulling off, sliding down and pulling off. Okay, this is taking it around the fretboard, taking the idea behind, playing it everywhere, and then try to put it together in a different way. What if, rather than having a lick, we had a chord, okay? So let's take this chord here. I'm gonna take a chord that I like, okay? And it's this one. Okay, this chord, the notes are A, fret number seven on string number four, E, fret number nine on string number three, G, fret number 8 on string number 2, and D, fret number 10 on string number 1. Okay, that's a suspended 7th chord, okay? Because yeah, the root A, 5th uh, E, 7th G, and, and the 4th, which is D. Okay, how do I take this around the fretboard? Yeah, I can try to play the exact same 4 notes somewhere else. Maybe I can play them on a lower 2 string, A, E, G, D. That would be great. Or here, A, E, G, D on the middle four strings. Okay, that works. Or here. That works great, but it's way more interesting if you move it up and down the scale. How do you do that? So first you need to know your scale. And the scale in this case is A minor, or at least I'm taking A minor as a scale, and so it's just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No sharps, no flats. And what I do, it's simply move all the notes of this chord one note higher in the scale, or move all the notes of this chord one note lower in the scale, okay? Let's go up. So, A, the next note in the scale is B. E, the next note in the scale is F. G, the next note in the scale is A. And D, the next note in the scale is E. And when I put all these together, I get this. Original chord, shifted chord, then I can shift this one. And by the way, you may like this sound, you may dislike this sound, that's okay. Let's go ahead, let's hear the other sounds. And maybe you may like some of those sounds and dislike some of the other sounds, and that's okay. Personally, I love this. Okay, especially together with this one. Okay, but we are here, and we move this another position higher on the fretboard, the B note becomes a C, the, e, the F note becomes a G, the A note becomes a B, and the E note becomes an F, and I get this. Okay, so I have... Okay, and then I can keep moving up higher. Probably too high on the fretboard. So I'm gonna go down rather than up now. Okay, so the more you do this, the more easy the easier it becomes to do it, okay? And you can start from any four notes or any chord. You can take chords. Uh, a chord that I like to do, for instance, is this, um, an A minor 11th. The notes are A on the 6th string, G on the 4th string, C on the 3rd string, and this D here on the 2nd string. And if you move these around, you get some interesting and a bit stretchy positions, but you can find interesting things on what you can play. Some of them, maybe an acquired taste. Okay. 
okay? But moving it around, you always find interesting sounds. So this is what is meant when you learn something and I or somebody else tells you and take it around the fretboard, okay? Just move it up and down in the scale, on, on, on the fretboard, on the string, change the string, and see what you can do with that, okay? And this is largely exploratory work, okay? So it's not that you have to learn anything. You just do it and hear the sound, okay? If you want more material to do that, and if you want to see a more coherent system to tie all those things together, of course, there are my courses. And today I'm going to recommend you my course, Complete Chord Mastery. Complete Chord Mastery, it's not a book. It's a complete video course that takes you from the basics up. We do everything you need to know about harmony and chords on your guitar. All the theory is done straight on the fretboard. There is no theory for the sake of theory here. Everything is immediately practical and everything is developed through exercises so you know how to apply these immediately on your guitar. If you have just a minute, click on the link on the top right to check out Complete Code Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestions, write them down in the comment. I enjoy reading from you and I make videos on your suggestions. This is Tommaso Zilio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!